Do you have the chess talent? Do you have what it takes to become a strong chess player? And if so, what is the level of that talent compared to other chess players? Today we've got a puzzle to figure this out. Alright, so let me first show you the puzzle and explain to you the task, and after that I'll show you the solution and the interpretation of the puzzle, okay? So here is the position, it is white to move, and as you can see this is an artificial position, there are no kings, and only white is gonna move. Your task is gonna be to relocate your knight from b1 to c1, to this neighboring square. But there is a limitation, your knight can never stand on a square attacked by opponent's queen. In other words, while maneuvering your knight, you can never occupy one of the squares marked by these red arrows, those squares that are controlled by black's queen. Black is not going to move, only white side is going to move, and you got to find that maneuver how to relocate the knight, okay? And you need to visualize the solution without moving the pieces on the board, actually. And the final thing that I want you to do is to measure the time. If possible, measure how long did it take for you to figure out that maneuver of the knight from b1 to c1. And after that, again, I'm going to share with you the solution and the interpretation. Meanwhile, while you're thinking, let me also address another doubt that you may have. Like, are these kind of tests actually legit and what they actually used? And I can tell you 100% yes. Uh, they were used by the former Soviet Union chess school, which is probably one of the best schools ever. It produced a greater number of strong players than ever. And I'm ancient enough to be taught by some of those coaches. And the high-level coaches usually have huge demand. A lot of students want to be taught by them. And therefore, they have to be selective. They don't want to waste their time because it takes years to produce a strong player. They don't want to waste years uh, on some student that does not have a potential to achieve high results in chess. And that's why they would use these kind of tests to determine the chess talent of a potential student up front. And what's good about these kind of puzzles is that your previous level of chess preparation is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if you know chess openings, you know, tactics or whatever, that not, none of that matters. because It's an artificial position anyway. The only thing that it measures is your ability to visualize maneuvers, which is the essence of chess calculation. For example, when Garry Kasparov some years ago was asked to uh, train Magnus Carlsen, and he you know, worked with him a little bit, uh, Kasparov said that Carlsen sees the board well. What did he mean? Well, exactly that thing, that his ability to visualize maneuvers clearly, okay? Now, I hope that you did uh, solve the puzzle, pause the video, and wrote down in the comments below the solution, the time you spent on it, and maybe even the variation that you found. And now let me give you the solution and the interpretation. Now, in order to show the solution, I had to add kings here, because otherwise the software tells me that this is an illegal position and I can't make moves. So I added kings, but it doesn't really matter. Of course, we're focusing on the knight, because the task was to maneuver the knight. So I'm going to play a random move by the black skin just so that we can see the white moves. All right, so here's the knight. It's going to move somewhere. The first move is pretty clear, because these two squares are controlled by a black's queen. Therefore, the first move is forced. It's knight at three. After that, where should the knight go next? Well, there are two options besides knight b1, but we don't want to move it back. Right, so these are knight b5 or knight to c2. These two things. Initially, when I was trying to solve this position on my own, I thought that, you know, knight c2 should be better, because, like, intuitively it feels better to keep it closer to the square where we want it to land. But, spoiler, I was wrong. Both moves are equally good, and they both solve the uh, puzzle in 9 moves. So, overall, it takes 9 moves to bring the knight from b1 to c1. Alright, let's start from knight to c2. So, let's say we go knight c2, where is the next move? Again, the next move is forced, it's knight e1, king goes here to g8. Uh, now, now we've got a choice. Either g2 or a3 could be uh, the next move. And now we also may use a little bit of our logic. Now, if we want to bring our knight ultimately to c1, what's going to be the previous square? From there, the knight will land ultimately to c1. Well, probably the square is going to be e2. And therefore, the question is, how do we maneuver our knight to bring it firstly to e2, and if we want to put it to e2, probably before that it's going to be on g3 because other squares are controlled by black's queen. And therefore the solution is going to be, for example here, uh, that goes to f3, then that goes to h2, and from there we're relocated to g3 finally, and from here it can land to e2, and finally to c1, hooray, mission complete. So that is the first solution to this puzzle, which is a legit solution in 9 moves. We brought the knight to c1, and it could never be captured by a black's queen. There is also the second alternative solution, which is equally good. And here is the second solution. Well, the first move is still forced knight a 3, and after king goes to g8, we discover the move knight c2. That was good enough. What if we go knight b5? Let's try this out. Once again, the next move is forced. It's knight c7. All the other squares are controlled by the queen, right? Therefore, it 
controls this square as well. The 4 knight c7 is forced, king g8. Now we have some choice of where the knight can go to. And uh, when we've got a choice, let's apply some logic and reverse engineering once again. If we want to bring the knight to c1, what's going to be the previous square for the knight to be? Looks like it's going to be the b3 square. Okay, how do we go to b3? The only available way is through a5. So the question really is how do we bring our knight to a5 without being captured? And so here's the maneuver, knight a6, knight b8, from there we go to c6, and then finally a5, and ultimately we reach b3 and c1 square, so that is the second solution. It also takes 9 moves, therefore the both solutions are equally good. Okay, now let's part, come to the most intriguing part, the interpretation about the time and how long did it take to figure it out. If your time is between 15 seconds to 30 seconds, your level is God. You are Bobby Kimovich Carlson. You are the greatest and you have the potential to become one of the best players one day. Now, if you spend from 30 seconds to 1 minute, that's a great result just as well. That's still a pretty high level of chess talent. If you spend from 1 minute to several minutes, that's a decent result, still pretty good, although not as impressive. And if you spent longer than that or couldn't solve it at all, then unfortunately, that's not such a high result. But regardless of, what, of your result, I don't want you to be discouraged. There were many players who uh, said that they had no talent for chess and, and yet they ended up being one of the world's top players after years of hard work and training. So with proper training, you can definitely improve your results, regardless of your level of that specific chess talent. Even if you never become, you know, the next Magnus Carlsen, you still can be a really strong player and achieve all of your chess goals. So if you um, do want to achieve your chess goals, regardless of your level of chess talent, I've got the good news. Uh, soon I'm going to open up the next enrollment for one of my flagship courses, the Grandmaster's Position Understanding. And actually in that course I used those ideas from a former, former Soviet Union chess school, but I adapted them to modern times and I can improve them, I think so. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, click the link below the video, join the waitlist, and as soon as the enrollment is open, we will let you know, because spots are limited. Now, let me know in the comments below what you think about this puzzle. I'm curious to know about your results. Also, if you enjoyed this, I've got another video with uh, another test of chest talent, so you may try this out just as well.